gentlemen, my next guest is a writer with the number one best-selling book in the country, or as the White House calls it, a garbage book. <laughs> well, a garbage author. Please welcome Michael Wolf. Thank you once again for this exclusive interview. <laughs> you know he's watching. Oh, he always watches. This is his favorite I, show. I, and, and he asked that one of the um, uh, remaining contacts I have said he asked for my media schedule today. So that might mean that all he's done today is watched me on television. <laughs> Wow, congratulations. Uh, congratulations. Do, are, you, are, you, uh, are you in any way surprised by the splash this book has made? Of course. I mean... You are surprised? I, I, I am surprised. You describe the president as mentally unstable, unfit for the office, basically kind of gibbering to his cheeseburger when he goes to bed. <laughs> and but he's got the launch codes. Why wouldn't I, that cause a splash? Because I thought we knew this. <laughs> it turns out... I kept saying be, before this came out to the uh, to, to my publisher, I said, "Oh, you know, you're printing a lot of copies. You know, this is there's not nothing really too new in this book." Oh, you said that to your, your uh, yeah, publisher. Yeah. And he goes, "You're crazy. He Sit wants down." To, yeah. Okay. Well, you said in this in the forward of this, you say I want to get this right. You say, uh, "But but uh, this, in your author's note, you say uh, you eventually, after going through all your material, settled on a version of events I believe to be true." What does that mean? It means it's the Trump White House. Everybody is telling you different stories. Uh, let's put it this way. Everybody is lying in their own particular way because that's what you do in the Trump White House. So I had to go and take whatever the event was, find as many people as I could, um, and then use my judgment. So you, you, it's just a judgment call as to what stories to include and what yeah, stories I not mean, to include. Well, what version of stories to include? In other words, in other words, there's a story in the book between a fight between Steve Bannon and Hope Hicks, mm -hmm. um, and, and they run down. They're running down the halls of the West Wing, in the um, into the Oval Office, and I got two pretty different accounts there from one side and from the other. So then I went to other people and thought, okay, I know these people well enough. I think I'm confident I've got it. Who did you believe? Did I get it? Which one did you believe? It was a combination. You, you have to believe neither of them in, these, in this situation. So some, you know, okay, this is the hope side and this sort of seems true. This is the Bannon side. This sort of seems true. Now, this is the, this is the Trump White House. So everybody, I mean, they would kill each other. You have two fundamental, these two sides who would be each other's assassins if they could be. So therefore, how do you get the truth out of, out of, the, out of one side telling you one thing, one side telling, telling you the other? But in this world that you're in, in, in the Trump White House, uh, the, the, the actual existence of it is such a crazy thing that is so unbelievable. You know, two years ago, if you had said, look, uh, I'm looking at the facts here and I'm going to say Donald Trump is going to be president, we'd say, you're absolutely crazy. I, That's it, not going to happen. A completely aberrant enterprise. So you go in there and, and you hear these events and you think, this is completely aberrant. Um, and this is the nature of this book. How do you put that into a narrative, into a story? How do you do it in such a way that it makes sense, that people can read this and say, okay, I have a pretty good, I'm pretty confident mm -hmm. that I now have some understanding of what's going on. So there. how should I read it, though? Because I'm you know, deeply conflicted when I read this. Because it's not that I'm not enjoying it, I am enjoying it. It, but it's not that it doesn't upset me. It does upset me. So on a certain level, I'm not enjoying it. As a comedian, sure, I'd love all this to be true so I can make jokes about it. But as a citizen, I don't want any of it to be true. And you don't have sourcing, at least not listed, for everything you've got in here. So how much of it should I believe? But this is what you, you should believe all of it. That's the alarming thing, that this is all 
true. But I do have to exercise some judgment. And you, you say you've got recordings of a lot of these uh, interviews here. Why not release the recordings so you can slap down the character attacks against you by the White House? Because I'm not in the recording. I'm in the writing business. You got to, uh, you know, if you want to turn to a recording, there, there are, um, there are um, uh, television there, these people are, are nothing but recorded. They're, they're on television all of the time. I'm offering something different. I'm offering, and this was totally mystifying to people in the White House, I'm offering a book. <laughs> you sit down, you read it, page after page after page. Does the story, is, does, this, does this comport with what you already know? Does it make sense? Does it have an internal integrity in which you come away saying, I think I understand this now? That's my job as the writer. I've got your greatest hits of this book right here. Some of the things, uh, he's, uh, he's semi-literate, uh, he has three TV screens in his bedroom, he goes to bed with a cheeseburger at 6.30, he's a long-time fear of being poisoned, he likes and to that's, eat And this is, this is just on one page. Yes. <laughs> he fails to recognize friends at Mar-a-Lago, repeats stories over and over again. Uh, Bannon says that the Russian meeting was treasonous. He, uh, Sam Nunberg only got to the Fourth Amendment before Trump is pulling, you know, down his lip. Ivanka and Jared have made a deal with themselves. One of them's going to run for president. Um, she makes fun of his ha uh, Trump's hair. But Ivanka is going to be the first one to run for president. And then Jared gets to go. Yeah. Is there anything in your book that you want, I can't believe nobody's picked up on this. Like, this was the shocking thing to me that nobody's picked up on. Is there something in here that you say, like, I can't believe nobody's asked me about this event? You know, the... And this is less of a funny, uh, this is like uh, a, a fundamentally serious thing about this, that everybody in the White House had their own press secretary. So the president has his own press secretary, not Sean Spicer, but his private press secretary. Jared had a press secretary. Steve Bannon had a press secretary. So there are all these, these, these different press operations. So the answer, what, why, is, why are there so many leaks in this White House? That's, that's what they did all day. That's what the operation was. So everyone's spinning their own PR all the time. Every, everybody. They're, they're essentially different White Houses with these little staffs going out, talking to the press all day long. Anything when you were there that gave you hope? Like, oh, this, they do this well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People got to go to sleep after this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, nothing. I mean, I mean, this is a really, this is alarming in every way. To sit there and basically, that's basically that's what I did. I was like the the sort of the, um, um, you know, come to me and tell me how how horrible you feel about about working here. I was the guy. Wow! And just people would reach out to you because they had needed somebody to talk to. I, I think the truth is that they were talking to everybody, and that but only I'm, you got the book. I'm the only person who, who um, was willing to say this because I'm the only person who doesn't have to go back again. I mean, the whole... I wouldn't there's... go back again if I were yes. you. <laughs> I mean, all of the reporters in the, in, the, um, in, the, in the press room and in the briefing room, and I was careful to stay away from there. I never went in as a reporter. Yeah. Um, they all, all have to show up there again and again and again every uh, day. Oh, I see. I do not. So this is the real story. Well, th uh, thank you for the book. Um, I look forward to the tapes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Michael Wolf, the book, Fire and Fury. It's the number one book. We'll be right back. Wow, what a cliffhanger. What's going to happen in the next Late Show video? Click subscribe to find out.